Uh, that's our problem. Uh, we have an earthquake, and we have to decide what to do with, um, with the bridge. We can either uh, do nothing, uh, close the bridge, or uh, decide for traffic restriction. Or we can collect the additional information using uh, sending inspector to check the state of the bridge, or using a structural monitoring system. The objectives are minimize losses, uh, reduction, and also try to select the best uh, um, information acquisition strategy. That's the case study. It's a bridge in, in Sicily, and it's, um, it's a bridge that is part of the main road of that, uh, the, that part of Sicily. And um, that is an isle, it's a very seismic area. The, the main concern is earthquake. Uh, some general information about the bridge is 100 and almost 180 meters long. Uh, it's a really simple bridge. Uh, there are four span, there are two, and three piers. There are two decks, but actually those decks are independent, so uh, they are not. I mean, there are there is a space between them. Uh, the piers are made of concrete, and the deck is made of. Uh, there are three steel beams and a concrete deck uh, on top of the beams, and the. Bridge is in the, uh, the overall state of conservation of the bridge is good. This bridge uh, is monitored by the Italian Civil Protection. There are there is there are some accelerometers on the bridge, and we have some reports from the Civil Protection. So we have some data on, about this bridge, the geometric uh, uh, characteristics, some picture, and they did also tests regarding materials and dynamic tests. And the vibration base, I mean, there is a structural monitoring system installed on the bridge based on uh, recording of, of uh, acceler acceleration. Some information about the implementation of value information analysis. We are considering two ways, yes, the sending inspector, inspectors or using a monitoring system. Uh, regarding visual inspection, we, we decide that the um, the inspector can choose a mark, range from one to five, regarding the state of the bridge. One is very good, good state of conservation. After the earthquake, five is very bad. Then, uh, regarding monitoring system, we have to decide which indicator we can use. Now, the civil, the civil protection is using the maximum drift at the top of the central pier. Or, but we can also able to uh, to compute the natural frequencies and mod shapes. Uh, the consequences of the, the failure of the bridge are direct cost, the collapse of the bridge, and indirect cost that are fatalities, uh, injuries, delay of uh, marriage operation, and, and stuff like that, pollution. Um, we are using decision tree. More or less done in this way, we can do nothing. That means not collect additional information, or sign inspection, or monitor. Then, so then we have five branches of the visual inspection corresponding to the five state of the bridge. And then also we uh, decide to use five state of the bridge regarding the monitoring system. So we also discretize the state of the bridge in five states. And that's also a problem. In fact, these are the two main problems for the moment. How to define the damage state of the bridge with numbers. Uh, which damage parameters we use regarding the structural monitoring system and how to define the electric function. Uh, that's an easy way that we are using to define the damage state of the bridge. It's a simple bridge. We, we hypothesize that the damage are localized in inches that are created at the base of the piers. And so we create, we compute these, those two graphs. That, that's the cross-section of the one of the, the, of the piers, they are all the same. This octagonal cross-section with the hole inside. We, so we try to define the damage state based on the moment curvature uh, relation. And state one is the damage. Uh, state two is, uh, we have to, is related to a crack, crack dimension in concrete. 
state three related to the uh, yielding of the steel, and the state four is like an, an ultimate state, but not so bad, and the five related to the 10% of straining steel that correspond to the debonding between concrete and steel. And then the last uh, damage state correspond to the ultimate uh, strain capacity of steel. You see two uh, graphs because they are related to the two uh, dimension of the cross section. So, so that's one problem. And then another problem is to find the damage parameter. We are starting from the drift. That is the basic parameter that uh, the seal protection is using. And then we have the problem of the likelihood function. That's our idea to compute the likelihood function. Basically, we need a, a finite model of the bridge. We create this simple model in SAP. It's a calibrated model. We have two natural frequencies and two model shape from the, the data that the civil protection gave us. Calibrate the model. Um, our idea to compute the the likelihood function that are basically what we want to obtain are five probability uh, distribution of the drift in corresponding to the five limit state that, are, that we have defined. So we have the model, we want to insert uh, plastic hinges, uh, perform a series of pushover analysis, modifying the parameter, the input parameters of the model that are the stiffness of concrete basically and um, the stiffness also of, of the springs at the supports of the, the bridge. Then for each um, pushover analysis, we want to uh, we want to op we want to obtain the drift corresponding to each analysis, and then add noise in order to simulate the, um, the error that we have when we, we measure this 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 drift this displacement, because they are what they do the civil protection do is the double integration of acceler acceler accelerations so maybe that's a big so source of error in our data and then we want to feed those probability with those data that we get from the model with probability uh, distribution next step of the value of um, value information computation you compute losses the direct and indirect uh, losses and we're trying to work on different uh, damage parameters that can come from model shapes or frequencies, and then perform the, the volume information analysis. That's it. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, regarding, if you can go to the slide where you uh, show the different uh, levels of damage for deterioration of the structure. So here, yeah. yes. Uh, I found it interesting uh, that usually when you define levels of uh, damage states, uh, you kind of choose one certain type of damage, and that damage increases uh, from uh, perfect con or uh, mm -hmm. good condition until uh, failure or and something in between. But in here, you're kind of uh, showing quite different uh, features. So, for example, you have. Uh, in the second uh, crack in, in the concrete and after that you pass to yield in, in, in steel and then to strain yes but do, do, yes as you're right uh, but those damage state correspond to different values of curvature that then we are trying to get from the model in each uh, simulation push over a simulation so the damage parameter is, is curvature at the end of the day it is always the same what do you define is where when you are checking this curvature. And, and, and how do you relate three, four, five with, with two? Why so two? How, how, how can you uh, be certain that uh, second damage state is a better state than third one? Because uh, the third damage state is related to the yielding of the steel. Yeah. But then when you go to the for the state, you also have the bonding between steel and concrete that you don't have before, so it's supposed to be worse. And the last is correspond to the to the ultimate strain capacity of steel, so you actually don't have a cross section anymore. So the, the idea is the more the curvature is growing, the bad this is the situation. So the, the, the curvature of the, of yeah. the cross section. The point is where it 
I mean, decide which is the, which are the damage states. Um, so we have to find some physical relation between those, the curvature and, I mean, the physical state of the cross tissue yeah, yeah. and the, the curvature. Um, do you agree with the computation of the, the likelihood function? That's what is the main yeah, issue. Yes, that's the idea, because we, because we cannot damage the real structure. It's a unique structure, so we have to, to work with the model that is calibrated, so it's supposed yeah. to be realistic. So then uh, you have uh, here, point six, is, uh, you have distribution of your... The damage parameter. Value or damage parameter yes. Or signal, and then you just need a threshold. Well, uh, it's like the situation is like continuous parameters of damage and, co and um, like discrete state of the structure. It's the, like what we did. Yeah, okay. the, so the, the, that's the approach that we are using. If you want to convert it into something binary, uh, this yes, we need, we need a trace. Code. Yes. Yeah. That could be an, another the, possibility. Yeah, behind is the hypothesis testing. Mm. Yeah. yeah, another big problem. The state, yeah. The other state or the, the, there can be uh, uh, binary uh, metrics uh, which is okay. binary states. Okay. Another big problem is to find the, the errors related to the computation. I mean, the, the er these errors is related to the, uh, the cellular meters themselves and also the process that we use to get this drift because during the double integration the results are not so accurate, maybe. So maybe we will so we will have a problem here as well. And you can uh, compute your uh, PDF uh, taking into account the structural uh, uncertainties, and then you make some noise. From the measurement, yes. Yes, yeah, from the sensor. Yeah. The yeah, we have to add it after the, the analysis because we cannot yeah. use the, I mean, put those uncertainties inside the model, the finite element model. Yeah, but uh, of course this is somehow maybe the best you can do, right? But it's still only developing um, a relation between measurements and the model output, so it's in the mm. confines of your finite element model. Yes. Uh, which might be okay and if you try to add some noise, mm -hmm in order to represent a model uncertainty, right? Not yeah. actually the only the measurement uncertainty, but also, also the model, yes. But the model uncertainty very importantly contains always the uh, model uncertainty as we understand it from our stomach, but also the uncertain bias. So this model will be biased. Yep. Uh, and that we can also consider uh, as a model uncertainty, as long as we don't know the bias, then it's just a little ad addition on the standard deviation of the model uncertainty, which still might have a mean value of 1 when you modify it to your model. I think the, the unknown bias still has a mean value of 1, because we don't know it, right? It's just yeah. a little bit more standard deviation, but what you introduce when you have a bias, you introduce dependency. Among what? Uh, among the different applications you apply for a likelihood. Okay. We discussed before, before that the likelihood always somehow refers to a population that is representative uh, for all the situations this likelihood is used in updating. Mm -hmm. But now uh, this, uh, you, you, you define it based on the population where you don't know exactly uh, how wrong you are. Okay. Because you only have it with your model and not with real life. Right? 
So when you apply your like do, there will be always a dependence. And that's I don't know I don't know exactly how to uh, incorporate this, but this is of course there mm. because you always use the the, uh, the, the, the the same model that is potentially wrong. You yes. Know what I mean? Yes. I mean, yeah. We calibrate the model so we we assume that is realistic. Yeah, and unbiased. Yes. Otherwise. Yeah. We only have two model shapes because those are the, the, the I mean the the input we have from the civil protection. So yeah. and, uh, that's the best. In my general structural engineering understanding, I would I would actually argue that in FED modeling, especially when we do pushover analysis, we mm -hmm. always have very strong biases. Also, the pushover itself, yeah. That's yeah. maybe a little bit the uh, Achilles uh, heel of this. But still, maybe, I mean, maybe that's the only way to, to work. Yeah, it's yeah. the best way we can do it, and yeah. it's the best way. It's not about right and wrong, it's about doing uh, Our best, le yeah. least wrong. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you.